Chapter 1. Your business can indeed be successful, but it definitely won't happen by chance. Unless you have clones of the same individual working for you, it is almost certain that you will not be surrounded by the same types of people. Each individual contributes to your success since they are a part of the culture which is imperfect because there is no such thing as a perfectly functioning culture. As a result, it is your obligation to bring everyone together to create a culture that will endure all of the storms that your company will experience, which can be a difficult undertaking. This piece is intended to demonstrate how to develop your organization's culture by using examples from historical individuals and the current business world as examples. This summary examines four models of leadership and culture building. Hades Toussaint Louverture, who led the only successful slave revolt in history. The samurai, who ruled Japan for 700 years and shaped modern Japanese culture. Genghis Khan, who built the world's largest empire. And Shaka Senghor, a man convicted of murder who was imprisoned for more than two decades. The ideals you list on a wall do not define who you are. It's not something you say in a company meeting. You are not your marketing strategy. It isn't even what you think. Your actions determine people's perception of you. This tidbit is designed to assist you in taking the steps necessary to become the type of leader you want to be and that others want to follow. You've already come this far. Continue reading to find out how the actions you do can contribute to the success of your company's operations. Chapter 2. Tusan Lovature the man who was bold enough to make a change. It may surprise you to find that there has only been one successful slave revolution in history. It was headed by Toussaint Louverture, a revolutionary who learned to read and converse through the years he worked as a coachman. Louverture built ties with both white and French people and made sure that as many slaves as possible were released. You could question why, if people didn't like being slaves, they couldn't fight for their freedom. It wasn't enough that they wanted independence. What they did was more important. He applied these tactics to make his army better. Keep what works. Initially, he drilled 500 men and used slave songs as a medium for communication. You don't necessarily have to abandon tried and true methods. It's possible that they'll be useful. Make a set of surprising rules. Trust encourages communication and is founded on the expectation of future partnerships. To build trust, Lovature prohibited his married soldiers from having concubines. It's easier to enforce policies that make people loyal to your organization when you don't make them feel controlled. Dress for success. Louverture made sure that soldiers wore the best clothes possible to give the impression that they were a high-ranking army. The way your employees dress has the ability to shift their perspective and how they see themselves. Outside leadership should be incorporated. Bringing in leaders from other cultures is a wonderful idea. They aren't all awful and can provide fresh perspectives. Your company should be able to adapt to new difficulties rather than relying on old approaches. Make decisions that reflect cultural priorities. Do something that others would not expect you to do, but that emphasizes the culture. Do what you say you'll do and when you say you'll do it. Inconsistency will cause everything to fall apart. Follow the rules. Make ethics explicit. Values can be a little hazy, so take the time to explain why they're important and how they can help the company succeed. Set explicit expectations for boundaries, rewards, and outcomes. By combining the most effective lessons from the pre-existing slave society with his own ideas, Toussaint Louverture raised an army in St. Domingue and conquered Britain, Spain, and France. Did you know, according to Forbes, highly engaged teams show 21% greater probability. Chapter 3. Toussaint Louverture's approach to wars is applicable to many businesses today because of its efficiency. Toussaint Louverture used a variety of strategies to make his army great, and your organization will profit greatly from them. You'll be able to establish a successful model that others can follow if you keep what works. Despite all of the advice he received when he returned to Apple in 1997, Steve Jobs stayed firm and decided to increase the quality of the company's products while also changing the culture to support this. He kept people who understood user experience and tapped into the unappreciated aspect of Apple's culture that helped it stand out. All of your organization's demands are sometimes already present. All it takes is a little tweaking. Secondly, by establishing surprising rules, you maintain your unpredictability and power. The following are features of strong rules. They must be simple to recall. 
The regulations must elicit a why response. Rules must have a distinct cultural impact. Workers must be able to apply the regulation on a regular basis. The rules that assist an organization's growth are those that can be implemented on a regular basis and meet the criteria listed above. Finally, your company's dressing culture may be the most powerful force propelling your business. This has an impact on how others see your company and how employees perceive themselves. You should also try to invest in outside leadership. No one would allow a stranger to come in and educate them how to do things differently, to be honest. However, in order to refine procedures and explore new territory, this is important. Make choices that reflect your priorities. People will look to you for guidance before taking a major leap because you are the leader. Don't be the one who makes them fearful and unwilling to make the proper choices. Even if it appears absurd, you must do activities that promote the organization's culture. Nobody has it all figured out. If you make a mistake and do anything that contradicts the organization's culture, be humble enough to publicly correct the error, as this will send the correct message to everyone. Proper communication leads to understanding. To avoid compromising circumstances, explain what is expected of each worker early on. Culture is formed through time by a succession of actions or inactions by a large number of individuals. Your company deserves to have a culture that produces the finest results possible. Chapter 4. Think of the end. It inspires you to do the work required in the present. It's not always about the stats or the bottom line. The degree to which your employees are driven determines whether or not they will continue to work for you. For nearly 700 years, the warrior class dominated Japan, preserving their culture and providing a thorough structure for dealing with any problem. To the samurai, culture was more than simply a system of values, passive beliefs. It was also a series of behaviors that produced virtues, active beliefs. The Japanese were known for their meticulous attention to detail and craftsmanship, which stemmed from their consciousness of morality as they regarded each moment as the last. When faced with an inescapable crisis, you should accept the worst-case scenario when contemplating what will happen if your firm collapses. Do you appreciate the idea of individuals saying your company aided them in achieving their goals while it was in operation? No? Then you must improve your culture. The Samurai Code was hinged on these virtues. Honor is the foundation for all other qualities. It directs one's actions. Politeness is based on the idea that it is a means to show respect to others. Veracity slash sincerity. Lies were frowned upon and words were revered. The extent of one's courage or cowardice cannot be measured in ordinary times. All is revealed when something happens. Ben Horowitz. People are finding it increasingly difficult to be polite or to do the right thing, as evidenced by the way they approach work and life in general. The samurai were effective because they practiced every day and had a good sense of what would happen next. Tell stories to help people understand the virtues you value and how they can contribute to everyone's growth. Chapter 5. Different situations will require you to be a different version of yourself. Prove your worth. To succeed in a new setting, you must alter your thinking and behavior. Even while serving 19 years in prison, Shaka Senghor mastered this art and was able to manage a gang. As he climbed in prominence, he studied gang culture in prison and recognized and enhanced the areas that were lacking. Shaka Senghor changed as much as he could while confronting the old culture with new ideas, and he connected with his staff by eating, learning, and working out with them while holding daily meetings to analyze the improvements. There is no culture that can't be altered, and no organization that can't be improved. All it takes is awareness, vision, and a will to do better. People rely on your judgment. Your culture is what you accept that forms your views. Your culture encompasses the people who make up an organization's culture. It is driven by everyone's daily decisions, which may be a tremendous challenge if you, as their leader, are not present to supervise what they are doing. When it comes to the things you need to do to take the company forward, putting your prejudice aside is a fantastic way to establish a sound foundation for when you are absent. What needs to be done to make progress? Find it and put it into action. Another key step is to only use the concepts that are appropriate for your company. Don't just do things because they worked for another company. Do things that will assist your company to develop. Your employees will test you on your cultural virtues, either accidentally or on purpose. So before you put one into your company, ask yourself, am I willing to pass the test on this? Ben Horowitz 
How your employees turn out is an excellent indicator of the strength of your company's culture. Because cultural practices, once assimilated, are deployed everywhere, a good culture generates a good employee. A poor culture does not. Hold yourself accountable and believe in your code in the event of a toxic culture or when employees try to manipulate the company's culture. Allow people to understand the urgency and necessity of change in order to avoid total collapse. You aren't perfect. Work on your flaws before they affect the people you're trying to lead. Chapter 6. Genghis Khan, through the practice of inclusion, made his mark in history. Genghis Khan is perhaps the most successful leader in history. With a legacy that spans nearly 150 years, he established a stable culture based on three principles. Meritocracy. Every man is equal and everyone has the ability to lead. Loyalty. A two-way relationship that ensures that those who disobeyed were promoted to positions of leadership. Inclusion. There was no aristocracy, and everyone had an equal chance of marriage or adoption. Everyone in your company has a role to perform and is an important piece of the success jigsaw. The diversity of an organization is its strength. Accept this, recognize individuals for who they are, and assign duties accordingly. Remove individuals who refuse to adapt to the new culture and who can incite others to do so from your organization. It is critical for you to be actively involved in strategy and its implementation as a leader. After you've figured out what you want, look for the best fit while allowing everyone to participate. This can be accomplished by altering your hiring strategy and focusing people on what will help your company flourish. Don't try to be someone else. Doing so will sap your power. The first step in obtaining the culture you desire is determining what you desire from the numerous possibilities available. The goal is to be better, not perfect. Therefore, designing a culture that you desire should be founded on what is relevant and flexible enough to adapt. Some handy tips are, even if others have a different vision of who you should be, be yourself. Recognize the aspects in yourself that require improvement. To get what you want, use who you are. Even the things you allow from yourself define your culture. Create guidelines that discourage excesses while rewarding individuals who follow the rules on a regular basis. Your cultural virtues will only be effective if they are actionable. Also, people will be willing to listen to you if you can differentiate your culture from others. And if you regularly pass the tests your employees will put you through, intentionally or unintentionally. Conclusion There is no such thing as a flawless culture. All that matters is that you are willing to change when your culture no longer fits you. Whatever you accomplish as an organization, make sure you always have these virtues. The genuine test of courage is the ability to trust. Always convey the truth to your employees and never lie to them. This will create a sense of trust. Openness to unpleasant news. If you don't want your staff to hide or sugarcoat ideas, tell them the truth. Loyalty is the foundation of a culture built on relationships. Don't keep your distance. Make connections. You can do even better than Toussaint Louverture, Genghis Khan, and Shaka Senghor. Keep your eye on the prize. Customers aren't always well-intentioned. Contrary to popular opinions, customers aren't always right. And modifying every detail of your product to appease them might swiftly lead to your company's destruction. It's a sign that corporate culture is deteriorating if the wrong people depart frequently, employees do shocking things frequently, or you consistently fail at critical priorities. At this point, you're in dire need of treatment, and an object lesson could be the solution. When something terrible happens, you deliver an object lesson as a dramatic warning. You'll have to modify your culture, fire people, or change a technique, but you'll lose a lot of money if you don't. Try this. Take time out to evaluate the culture in your organization. Seek out the flaws and set a goal using the techniques you've learned.